This week we've been spending time in the first chapter of Mark, uh, hearing the story of uh, Jesus, uh, the beginning of Jesus' Galilean ministry. And I'm going to once again read part of that uh, gospel where it talks about Jesus calling the first disciples. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And as he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat, mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Here ends the reading. Um, last night I happened to have the opportunity to be talking with couple of our confirmation students and we read this passage and uh, asked a simple question what does it mean that Jesus is calling them to fish for people and one of the things that I shared is that uh, in my own life I was an engineer for for 10 years and spent a lot of my life actually growing crystals and and fabricating them into these special detectors that were part of this device and it was a very successful project and product and uh, I know there was a time where I realized I could keep doing this kind of thing, working with these crystals and these little devices and kind of transforming and researching and developing the next generation. And um, the, the shift for me is that I felt there was something more important, something that would make a bigger difference. And so instead of kind of doing that work with little electronic devices and crystals, that what appealed to me or what called to me was really the work I was doing with uh, the, with young people in youth ministry, feeling like I, there was more of an opportunity to, to impact lives that way and make a difference. And so you might say instead of being a, an engineer of, of electronic elements, I became ooh, an engineer of people, but certainly working to uh, improve life for people. And um, I was just playing around because when I say playing around, there there's some wordplay here. Uh, Jesus called uh, those first disciples. They heard the call and answered it, and it transformed their life. And uh, I'm not sure people live with a sense of calling as much these days. I think for a lot of people, there's work that they do. And for a lot of folks, it's it's a job. It's a way to, way to make money. When people claim their job as a vocation or their vocation calls them to do work then that they get paid for, it's it's a different situation. It's like God creates each of, uh, each of us with particular gifts and passions and, and desires and, and abilities. And when we're able to uh, claim those as a gift from God and then discern how God is calling us to use them to make a difference in the world then that's pursuing a vocation and makes it in and it, it there's a, a sense of aligning with God's desire for the way that we're called to be a blessing to the world so also I was thinking about uh, in, a, in addition to uh, people talking about having careers but there's also a sense that people have professions. And I just got curious because we're talking about professing our faith, right? And so why, where, where did this sense of profession come from as far as a, kind of a career kind of thing? And it went, uh, apparently the root of that or the, the origin, or origination of it uh, is uh, people, when they made their vows to be priests, they professed it. And it took on this sense of people professing to be skilled or trained in a particular art. And it was kind of this, this claiming of uh, and pronouncement of what, of what their giftedness is. Uh, just like vocation, I think there's a way to reclaim profession. That when we enter into a profession, especially with a sense that we're professing that God has gifted us for this and we continue to work and, and discover our giftedness and and hone it and and use it to make a difference in the world there's something bigger that happens uh, there's again the excitement about aligning with God's call and aligning with uh, really the 
may the blessing God intended us to be in the world. Let us pray. God, just like you called those first disciples, but even before that, the way you called Abraham and Moses and others, um, there is a way that you uh, strive to draw people into the work that you are doing. Um, get us curious about the ways, uh, curious about the ways you're calling us. Also, give us the ability to recognize the ways that we've claimed your call and may it give us a different perspective on how we live our lives and partner with you in what you're up, up to in the world. Call us, use us, claim us. Amen.